Hi, welcome girls and boys. Today is Friday, April the 10th. This video is for the PM class. I want to make sure that you're aware that this class is for the PM class. Well, welcome. Let's review everything you're going to need for today. You need your nameplate and either a pencil and paper or your nameplate with plastic and a marker that's a dry erase and some Play-Doh. We've been studying the letter U. So that's what we're going to do with our Play-Doh. Okay, let's get started with the first thing. You can put it on pause if you need a few extra minutes to get your materials. First thing we're going to do is write our name. Take your time when you write your name. Try to stay in the lines. If your parents need a reminder on how to make nameplates. I have a video that's called Task Cards, and I explain it on that video. Here you go. Here's my name. What's yours look like? Show me. Nice work. I really like that you're working so hard at home. You're a dedicated group of students. Let me make sure that I have my eraser. I'm going to erase mine so I'm ready for next time we get together. Now I'm going to get my Play-Doh out and I'm going to divide it in two so I have a bigger chunk and a smaller chunk because I want to have enough for the uppercase U and the lowercase U. The uppercase U is also known as the capital. A capital letter like a capital letter you have for your first name. We'll be talking about that in just a second. Here we have uppercase U. Now take your Play-Doh and make a small U. See if you can do that. Here we go. Uppercase U, lowercase U. Uppercase, lowercase. You did nice work. If you need some extra time, you can go ahead and pause. Make sure you put your Play-Doh cap right back on top so that it's fresh for next time when we get together. Okay, students, we were talking about capital letters and letters in general. Let's review your names and go over the first letter in each of your names. Let's start here. This is Chris. This letter is C. Can you say C? Chris. Owen. I can hear you saying, that's my name. What's the letter? O for Owen. This is Bennett. B -b Bennett. This letter is B. Say B. Hi, Carson. Carson, what letter is this? K, K, K for Carson. E, E, Evelyn, Evelyn. Can you say E? E. Jessa, J, J, Jessa. What letter is this? J for Jessa. Elias. 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 It, you can hear the letter in the name. E. Elias. I do that so you can feel the air coming from your mouth when you make that sound. Hayden. Hayden. The letter is H. Here we have Christopher. Very similar to the first name we had, Chris. It's the same other than Topher. Christopher. Christopher. Same first letter. The letter is C. C. Another name that begins with the same letter, Caitlin. K 
Caitlin. The first letter is C. Easton. Easton. The first letter is E. Jax. Jax. J. Jax. Another name. Same sound. J. J. It's the J. J. Sound. J. 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 Very good. You did a wonderful job with names today. Today I'm going to read a few books to you. The first one's called One Foot Two Feet. And this one is by Peter Maloney and Felicia Zekos. Here we go. We're going to see some different pronunciations because when you have one of something, sometimes it has a different sound than if you have more than one. So here we have one foot, but if you have more than one, two feet. Feet. I think this is a fun picture because it looks like there's a little band-aid on the back of this child's foot. And uh, maybe he had a little bobo. Have any of you ever had a bobo and had to get a band-aid on the back of your foot on your ankle? Here we have one mouse. But if you have more than one, what do you call them? <gasps> Three mice. So if you have more than one, you no longer say mouse, you say mice. One, two, three. Three mice. One goose. But what do you call more than one? Four geese. One, two, three, Four geese. One snowman. What if you have several? What do we call them? Five snowmen. One, two, three, four, five. Five snowmen. One die. Look at this, I have one right here. A die. But if you have more than one, you say dice. Six dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. One ox. But what if you have more than one? Seven oxen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven oxen. One octopus. But what if you have more than one? Eight octopi. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I hear you counting out there. You're doing a nice job. Count with me. One tooth. But what if you have a whole mouthful? What do you call them? Nine teeth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine teeth. One person. What if you have more than one person? Ten people. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice counting. 
That was a great book. When I saw this book, I thought of the PM class because we like to talk about colors all the time. And this is such an interesting book because it talks about animals that are blue. B-L-U-E, blue. Let's learn about animals that are blue. A rainbow of animals. There we have a red cardinal, a yellow boxfish, and it's a panther chameleon, so it can change different colors. Chameleons change from one color to the next depending upon what they're near. And here we say, go outside and look around. How many kinds of animals do you see? Birds and fish are animals. So are spiders and insects. Animals come in all sizes and shapes, and they come in all the colors of the rainbow. Here we have a blue frog, a green leaf mimic catty did, Katie did, and then we have a butterfly that's purple. Blue shark. Being blue helps some animals hide. This shark's blue body makes it hard to see as it swims through the ocean. That helps the hungry hunter sneak up on its prey. So this helps the shark find food so nobody can see it coming. No animal. Blue ringed octopus. Take a close look at this. Do you remember an octopus has how many legs? Octo means eight. It has eight legs. This animal's pale skin and blue rings make it stand out. When enemies see these bright colors, they know to stay away. It would be a bad idea to attack this octopus. Its body has enough poison to kill 20 people. Did you know some octopi can actually kill? You have to be really careful. You have to know what you're looking at. Many times in nature when you see bright colors, it can mean poison. So in this case, this octopus has poison. Blue poison dart frog. This little frog is easy to spot, but most predators will not try to eat it. The frog's bright colors say, watch out, I'm full of poison. So here we have a frog, again it's blue, and again it has poison. And a poison, poison can make someone really, really sick. And if they get too much poison, it could even make them die. So you have to be careful in nature to know what you're near. Here we have a blue frog. Here we have indigo bunting. Some animals want to send out a different message. Their blue bodies say, come to me. This bird's bright feathers help him attract, that means come near, its mate. The male's feathers are light brown. They help her hide from predators. So this is a blue bird, and this blue bird is nice. So sometimes in nature, blue is not bad. This is a nice bird. Blue-footed boobies. At mating time, these birds are on an amazing show. The male spreads his wings wide and whistles. Then he struts, slides, shuffles, and stomps his bright blue feet. That's one good way to get a female to look at him. Look closely at those feet. Blue, blue feet. Looks like they dip their feet in blue paint, but that's the way they're made. Golden monkey. What's blue on the monkey? The face. These monkeys live in mountain forests. Their light brown fur makes them hard to spot. Luckily, they know how to find one another. They just look for the bright blue faces of their family and friends. And there we have a morpho butterfly. The tops of these butterflies' wings really stand out but the bottoms are light brown. When the insect rests with its wings folded up, it's very hard to see. 
See, when its wings are folded, you can barely see it. It blends in. But look, when it opens its wings, it's blue. And then it gives the butterfly a chance to get away because it surprises anything that might be wanting to eat it. Now this is amazing. It's a blue-tongued snake. Did you know any snakes had blue tongues? It says a skink. Actually, it's a lizard. It says this lizard has its own trick for staying safe. When an enemy attack, the lizard sticks out its tongue. The bright color helps scare off the predator. Look at that tongue. Oh my. And then blue darn dragonfly. This insect can change the colors of its body. On cool mornings, it is dark blue. That helps its body warm up faster in the sun. On hot afternoons, the dragonfly turns light blue. That helps its body cool off. There we have a peacock. It has blue. And there we have a spider, tarantula. And it shows different kinds of animals live in different parts of the world. So you can find blue animals all over the world. What a great book. I want to let you know how much fun I've had this week. I know it's a different way of teaching and learning. But stay tuned. And I'll have videos posted every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in April. Now you do have two assignments. I have a science activity that I think you'll enjoy. We're going to be building a bridge. So underneath in the description, I have where you need to go. It's one of my videos on how to build a bridge. And it's out of things that you have in your home. I think you'll enjoy it. And then there's also a uh, story I want you to read online. Just go to Storyline Online and it's called Turkey Trouble. It's a silly book that I think you'll enjoy. So please enjoy the science activity we'll be doing together and stay tuned next Monday for the next um, installment of When We Get Together. Thanks and enjoy your weekend. Goodbye.